news. Just your impressions of the first private padded practice and, and what your message was to the team coming out of that. Uh, definitely. I, I think it, it looked like it's um, kind of a normal, you know, uh, through my history of being the head coach, uh, you know, a lot of the things that go on in your first padded practice. Um, I thought the, you know, the, the just the pace of operation and the, and the mechanics of it, I thought we got off to a good start. Uh, the pressure periods are, it's always a, a great indication of how important uh, this work is to see those, see those things uh, full speed. Um, and the communication that was going on at the line of scrimmage, you know, defense did a really nice job there. So, um, and, it, and the offense just can't get enough work against that. Really stressing your young players for the first time to see uh, their ability to, to apply, you know, the schematic part of it. Uh, because, you know, you get into these uh, these ramp up practices, but you're still flowing through an install. Um, and see, to see our guys react to, you know, in a, in a sense of one day game plan and apply it. So, uh, too many guys on the ground. You know, there's there's some things that we, we got to be better. So, you know, I, I go through all the mechanics, um, just the way I've always have. Uh, probably, you know, as far as the practice set ethic, uh, what, what we need to do better because you know we want to keep the player safety as high as possible. Uh, but I, I thought it was a solid day. Clarence Hill for Star Telegram. Uh, can you just talk about the running backs and how they've done. I know there's so much talk about Zeke with some of the other guys and and what you're seeing from them. Yeah, definitely. I, and I think this, this is where they're, you know, this this is where their work, work will really will really step up because you, you know, they're all natural runners. You know, they they wouldn't be at this point of their career. But uh, you know, you know, how, how are we progressing in in the pass protection? You know, I, I think Rico really showed us last year that where he is. But you can see, you know, uh, Deuce. I think Hunter has just uh, made leaps and bounds. Uh, be, uh, really felt that way uh, at the end of the, you know, probably midseason last year. So continue to pro progress. Um, Malik Malik has done a done a nice job. So and I, and I think the other guys Royce is um, just a, a vet that seems very very comfortable in our system. Has picked it up schematically and has a really good understanding, particularly in the in the protection part of it. I appreciate that. So yeah, I think they're all doing a good job. The other day that Royce was better than what you guys thought he was, or couldn't believe he was out there. What, what has he shown you, or what does he bring that? Uh, I just because he because he does everything well. Um, you know, I think cl clearly you know knew him as a runner. Um, but when you when you see running backs when the, when the bullets are really flying and the pass protection part of it, uh, you know the declaration, the adjustments, all that. Um, I, I think it's been excellent. He's got very good hands, so has a very high understanding of the game, and and, and, and also he's a he's a you know has a chance to be one of our primary players on special teams. So um, he's a really good fit for us. You addressed this earlier, but Deuce has done some things with the receivers. Can you just talk about the plan there? Yeah, I've been trying to cross train some of our younger players. Deuce is one of them. Uh, just you know, the ability to play both in the backfield and out of the backfield. Uh, just you know, he's always been featured more in a one-back offense, and uh, we're, we're obviously dabbling in some of the two-back. And um, but you know, his ability to play in in the, in the empty sets more too. So just trying to tr cross train him and, and give him more opportunities. Got any more? <laughs> Boy, you guys are getting along so well too. God. Dog days of camp, we're here, huh? We don't normally get do follow-ups. Yeah, you guys so are fighting know. in the front row. Yeah. I don't know if it's a new emphasis, uh, but I noticed one thing in practice yesterday: a lot of fourth down work. Is yeah. that, has that been an, uh, an added emphasis for you guys this year? Didn't happen last year. No, I mean we're we're pretty much the same as we were last year. Just as far as a, you know, that was our third install. So, yeah, just the the importance of you know really third down plays more like second down, and uh, that, that's all part of the emphasis. Uh, to, yesterday was our first third down day, but no, it, yeah, we we'll, we'll we'll run with that same format as we did last year. We just really base them off the league numbers and the trends. Uh, we have an anatomy segment each and every day uh, when there's a particular situation. We emphasized yesterday was third down. You know, today is God country and red zone. So and we, we emphasized that today. Uh, so in just showing the league trends uh, is important. Um, some things have held up for you know, for decades, you know, and then, then there's always some new wrinkles that you see come into the league. So just, you know, I, I think as much cross the hall that you can give your football team from the offense and defense, I mean, it's all part of this environment we're in. And then the one-on-one -on -one pass rush, you look like you split it up into two groups, whereas before, that's not, was that just a way to get guys more Yeah, work? we're trying to just get to work. Yeah, I mean, just trying to be efficient. Uh, you know, this is our last day of uh, of the uh, ramp up phase. So, you know, we're 120 minutes, so we get to 150 um, on, on Friday. So, yeah, just trying to maximize our time. John, John Cho of The Athletic. 
it looked like Tyler Guyton did pretty well in, in his opportunities against Micah. I was just kind of wondering what you thought of Tyler and his. Yeah, it's training. it's great work, obviously. Yeah, I mean he can't get enough of it. Yeah, he, he's doing some good things. Um, but I, I think he's you know, just like a lot of these rookies. This is it's going to see how it keeps coming at him. But yeah, I, I thought he had some nice reps against Micah. Uh, Mike, you've had to uh, embrace the draft and develop philosophy of this organization. In your years as a coach, are there two or three things that you try and stress to those young players to help them make that jump just as fast as they can? Because this year you're obviously obviously going to have to um, depend on a lot of young players. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm frankly, let's be honest. I've been in draft and develop since 2006. And, you know, it's it's a, it's a it's a mindset and approach I'm very comfortable with, and it's and it's so important. And it's the old. You know, teacher adage that you know you always teach to the lowest individual in the room, and, and the lowest is obviously is our youngest. And um, so we we've always tailored everything that we do. You know, starting with the rookie orientation when these guys get here in off season program. And at the end of the day, it's all part of that mentoring and and all part of that culture you're building and, and reemphasizing in the locker room. So yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a plan I'm comfortable with, and, and I think our guys do a tremendous job with it. Anything in particular that those young players really respond to that you've picked up through the years? Respond? Uh, I think the I, I think probably the number one comment uh, for for a young player and just having a chance to visit with the rookie class at the end of uh, the off season program is uh, is is how open and and how generous the veteran players are in helping them. So I mean that was almost to a man, one or two top you know top points that they made and and I, and I just think that's critical and I think it shows shows a lot about our veterans and, and what we have going here because that's just that's how we've always operated. Calvin Watkins, Dallas Morning News. How's uh, Cooper DB been looking to you so far in camp? Looks good. I mean, you know, I think with you know, you, you really you know, appreciate from him uh, if you look at, you know, because you're always looking, hey, okay, this is what he did in college. You know, I'm talking about every prospect comes in. Does he carry that over to the, you know, to the pro practice? And, and the point I'm making is uh, I, was, I, was, I was really impressed with his contact balance as a, as a college player at K-State. And you could see that right away, you know, in the first nine on seven um, and some of the, you know, and some of the pass protection reps. Because then we had, because frankly, we had uh, people on the, on the ground way too much yesterday. I think we had eight of them. So, I mean, that's entirely too much. Uh, but that's, you know, I think that's a real strength of him, and I think that's part of being uh, being an anchor in there. So, but you know, the other part of it is he's got a, he's, he just needs reps. I mean, he's um, like just all of our guys. They've done a really nice job picking it up schematically. Um, as far as the classroom, I'd give those guys the, the class pretty much an A. Uh, but they, but now it's time. I mean, they got you know they get we got to see them apply it and connect with their teammates and and um, you know definitely Cooper has a lot of responsibility um, in that area because he's playing the center position. Yeah, but it goes for every rep and even every day. But uh, when you have a good offense and a good defense, how do you, as a coach, how do you evaluate the reps in terms of if one side was good versus the other side was disappointing? Well, I, I think it's just like anything. It's the video. You know, you, you, I mean, there's. I mean, obviously, you have you have the play. You know, the the, the, the success of the play, the result of the play, but. You know, you, there's so much more that goes into it, and that's what training camp's for. So, um, just take the pressure periods. I mean, if you were charting it uh, based off the result, the defense had a better day than the offense. You know, as as far as the the scheme challenge. But you know, once again, there's uh, you know, it's your first day in pads. You know, how you're getting lined up and so forth. I mean, we had we had too many we had too many pre snap penalties. I think we had five pre snap penalties. So it's just it's all those little things because. Uh, you'll see it. You see it every camp. You know, you, you get to a point where, you know, it, it's seamless. And, and and now all you're talking about the, you know, the details and the execution. And we had some good detail snaps, but it's, you know, it's, you know, we're just getting started. Like I said, it was a, I'd say it's a solid day. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't walk off the field thinking, man, that that wasn't very good, um, because they're, you know, the, you know, the tape that I put together every day, you know, for the players is just, you know, to show the things you want to improve on. But there's. The good things in there, and, and you know, you're, you're kind of on a time crunch and you're trying to fit it in. But guys, I think it started with about 38 plays, you know, and then you cut that down to 12. So I think that speaks to the, a lot of the good things that went on. And uh, but you got to get, you got to get it corrected. And I, I think these are just normal, you know, processes of training camp. And even individually, when Micah goes against Guyton and Guyton is able to pull them off, do you, how do you balance those? You want 
to see Michael win, but then you also want to see Guy, you know, hold his own. What's the balance there of evaluating those those two players in that situation? I mean, it depends what room I'm in. You know, <laughs> I'm rooting for everybody right now. You know. <laughs> Uh, but when that door closes, I go to the offensive room, you know, my tone and my language and my content changes. So, I mean, that's just, I think that's part of being a head coach. Hey, Mike, Pat Doney, NBC DFW. We saw Brandon Aubrey kicking yesterday in the group. And, I mean, the team still picked up right where he left off last year. Can you just speak to how impressed you were that he was able to, as a rookie, be an all-pro the way he was, and then your expectations for him to build off that in 20 Yeah, I think like any player, you know, especially when you go through it the first time and, you know, with his late arrival and so forth, and, uh, you know, just seemed so calm, cool, and collective, you know, from day one. Um, so, you know, then you have success, and that's, that's to me, is a, is a big light bulb that, you know, shines a bright light that you, that you look for, uh, how, look at, how people are going to react, and um, I, I just couldn't get over how consistent he was, um, just from day one to, to the end of the season. You know, so and, and now working with him, that's his personality. I mean, he's he's like that every day. So I think very well grounded, um, just a very humble young man, but obviously extremely talented. Mike Lundy, Mike Lundy, WFA. As you guys get into full pads, and obviously the intensity yeah. elevates. How do you coach your players up in terms of bringing that intensity, but not where's that line in terms of not going too far to the point of playing out of control? Well, I mean, it's the emotional discipline of your football team, and you know, self discipline is something you're you're highlighting each and every day. I mean, it's you know, that's why it's important for us as coaches to make sure the job you know job description is clear, uh, make sure the job, job responsibilities are, are you know are in line as far as how we're going to practice each and every day. But that, I mean, that's that's why we do it. But uh, yeah, the, the ability to compete. I mean, there's a discipline in in going full speed and being and being being smart in tough spots, you know, and and when you get into these practices, you know, when you get when you get a teammate in a compromised position, there's a there's a discipline not to finish them, because in the same breath, we're when we're not in compromised position and then we're in good football position, we want we want to be finishing, you know, like none other, none other. So I mean that's all part. I mean we throw this word discipline around. I mean it's it's physical, mental, and emotional, and and that's all part of the training of your team. And I I, I say it all. All the time practice needs to look a certain way it needs a and, and and once again when players are on the ground the player safety component is is in is in jeopardy so um but you know to me it's you want to talk about penalties you want to talk about classroom you know the efficiency of your camp all that's part of the the discipline you're trying to build uh, because at the end of the day you want your team to be urgent uh you want them to play with urgency well, you got to practice that way and uh, and that's just not once the ball snapped too. So, I mean, all the all those things are tied into into team development. What was a day like today, like for you, Military Appreciation Day, just seeing yeah. the, the interaction between your players? And so yeah, this is this this is an awesome day. I mean, uh, it's you know, it's it's the, the appreciation, hero appreciation, is 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 what we call it. And you know, it's it's obviously the military, uh, public safety's here. So uh, we'll have a chance to you know, law enforcement and. And first responders, uh, you know the, the group there. So we have a number of different uh, groups that have come in for it. So our, our players will, will participate and have a chance to, see, you know, see those individuals after practice. Uh, you know, obviously we're honor them here with some things going on. So don't be late for practice. Uh, so yeah, this is a, this is an awesome day. I mean, it's year five for you with him, but yeah. what did you think of Demarcus Lawrence before you got here, and how has it has it changed from? being around him every day. Yeah, just looking back, I mean, one of the things that, you know, uh, did when first came here in 2020 was just, you know, you pull up your old, you know, game plans uh, from, you know, playing the Cowboys. And, and, and one thing, you know, that uh, we talked about D-Law was, you know, he's a bowling ball full of butcher knives and he's he's, he's that kind of player. So, um, and, and that's what I think everybody, you know, knows and loves about him. So, I mean, he's he's gonna, you know, he's hard all the time. Um, he's he's been a good leader for us. You know, I know in my time here, so uh, commands the respect and he's earned it. What is he like with that room, and how much do you think those? Is it a little bit like Zach on the offensive? Oh side yeah, absolutely. No, I mean he's he's a senior, he's a senior guy in there, and him he's he's the he's the one that speaks up, you know, on the leadership council. But yeah, definitely, we, we, he has a big responsibility for us in the locker room. Cowboys.com. I know we talked a bit about uh, Brock Hoffman around OTA time and the work that he put in over the offseason. How have you seen that translate to the field so far? Yeah, Brock's, Brock's been an excellent uh, leader. When, you know, it is Rob's responsibility. He's, uh, you know, 
I, I love his command. You know, he has a great understanding of what we're doing, um, and you have to have that as an anchor. So, uh, it'll be good. You know, he just wants to get. But he, this is his first real opportunity, and uh, he, he's done a good job so far. How encouraging is it from your perspective to see "quote unquote" competition happening, but all those guys still helping each other at the end of the day? We talking everybody or offensive line or. Yeah, definitely. I think it leads to we talked about earlier with Calvin. I mean, it's just you know, it's it's part of your culture. You know, it's 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 part of um, you know what, what you're trying to build. You know, an offensive line group does a does a great group. You look at the way that depth chart is in the offensive line. I think it's a great example of what I'm talking about. You have you know you have a, a good line of veterans in there, and then you got a, a really young line of guys behind them too. So I really like the balance of experience in youth you have there so you, you have to have that you know that mindset of guys helping one another and, and frankly we want to be better of we call across the hall you know the o-line I'm, I'm i'm more interested in the o-line and d-line you know relationships as far as far as how they interact and this is something we've talked about you know in our leadership council all right thank you